Hi, welcome back. If you're new, welcome. And today I'm going to be looking at the roadmap for the infected 2022. So hopefully we can get through it all. It should be pretty easy to get through. And hopefully they actually do bring this stuff out in 2022. So this tab read first, so we're going to start there. Um, hey folks, welcome to the 2022 roadmap for the infected. The cards contained in this board outline some of the features, mechanics, and changes that will be worked on implemented throughout 2022. These cards are subject to change. Now, I'm not sure who this person is, but they're everywhere in this thing. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. This this person. Um, I'm not going to be reading all this out because there's a lot, but we will go through it all. Yeah, so this is just saying, like, this is the spot. And they might have a Discord. This is the spot to check, though. Yeah. So these updates will take time. Any of these features and changes. Normally, an update takes about, depending on the update, it takes about um, uh, four months. That's norm That's a, like a normal amount. Six months, that's a pretty big update. That would be pretty big to the game, whatever it is. Long body testing takes. Each of the update cards will start sparse and be enhanced as time goes on. I've already like gone through this sort of, so it's kind of starts on this side, but we'll read these and then we'll start on that side. So thoughts on the state of crafting the game, including some keybinds, item and PDU exists so that people can see the exact ingredients, an item requires to be crafted and bypasses the guesswork, discovering method that many other survival games uses for crafting mechanics, become of strategic complaints, blah, blah, blah. So make more items craftable in bulk. Yes, definitely. Don't require the specific quantity or ingredients to craft an item. Um, don't require the specific quantity or ingredients to craft an item. Hmm. However, I definitely think make more items craftable in bulk is definitely a good thing. I think pretty much everything in the game could be made in bulk. I don't see like why not. You know, I've pretty much done the calculations on it all. And it's the exact same as if you were to do it singly. Yeah, it's just like, we just, I would like more things to be bulk crafted if possible. About shift, cl alt, click, or anything to do with the buttons used for splitting, forming, or moving items. Item stacks. Yeah, so this is like, I think they want the game to be a way where you kind of have to, can you see my mouse? Where you kind of have to let go click and then drag it and drop it somewhere like when you use your bag yeah they do have some shift or alt clicking things in place like in minecraft however i don't they might update that but i don't think they'll do too much with it because i think that's the kind of game they want to make uh doo -doo -doo. related to foliage Update of the evolution of comes. Yeah, we know this. So this looks like, okay, so this is straight from the developer. So this looks like things they're either talking about or have done or, yep. Guns are declined suggestion. More well, future projectile or range weapons are planned. No plans to make firearms. If you do want a game like the infected that has firearms, there's a game called Hold Your Own, which looks exactly the same for some reason. There are no plans to add multiplayer to the game. The developer is uh, interested in creating a balanced, enjoyable single-player game experience. So, okay, so everybody wants at least co-op or LAN in the game. Like, everyone who plays this game, right? I don't know if it's moddable or not, like, like in other games, where you can just, like, mod it into the game. If that's possible, maybe someone should get on that that actually knows how to do it. I did hear when watching a video by someone called Cage848 that they said that multiplayer will be in the game. It's just right now they're trying to work on the single player game, get the story done, get all this other stuff that we're going to go over in a minute done. And once all that is done, perfected, then they might add multiplayer and co-op. It's not certain, but then they might add it. 
So apparently the dev told him that and yeah, hopefully they do add it. But if they don't, if someone can mod it in, that would be like super cool. You'd be like a hero. The fob slider will remain at 100, though no plans to change it. Yeah, so apparently they have this, if you ever played Minecraft, you know what a fob slider is. It's basically like how far you can see the screen. Now, the reason why Minecraft has one of these, if you didn't know, is because a lot of people um, have different vision requirements, right? So for me, uh, the regular default one in Minecraft is pretty good. I usually put it up by about 10, just because that's fine. And then I'll change it depending on what I'm doing, you know, um, if I'm looking around for something, blah, blah, blah. But if you wear glasses or if you have really bad vision and you need like glasses all the time, then your fob slider might work better at a lower or a higher setting. So they're limiting the people who can play this game. So we're going to kind of skip to the end here because this isn't actually the end. This is the start. So if we look here, I'll show you what I mean. So food types and the impact on virus stats will be redone. That's done. It's been done. Um, <clears throat> unless they're redoing it again but yeah this is um 6th of february so when was this one hang on hang on when was this one 3rd of march 6th of january add this card to misc okay yep so changes to a brand new environment so this is when they added the new war caves that we have now and I'm pretty sure this required a restart. Yep, restart current game stage. But don't worry, you don't have to restart the game. This is old stuff. I'm just going over what they did change. Quick swap tools by using mouse wheel. So you can do that if you didn't know that. Find a key to open the food bag. You can bind keys. Photography mode or way to hide all in-game UI aspects for screenshots. G, you press G. Um, I do that all the time to uh, take screenshots for this game. Uh, wash hands in the sink. Yep, you can totally do that. Ability to stack glass. Yep, I've done that. Okay. Painting idea. Glow. So this is just whenever you see a stick or something or a stone or iron and it kind of glows. I kind of like that too. I've also said, suggested like, um, I don't know where I'd officially suggest it, but that they should make certain things glow red like if you drop a tool it'll glow red or if you maybe it'll glow something a little less you know maybe like a orangey or whatever because you might want to drop it in your house you don't want it annoying you but for an animal for example yeah glow red because the amount of times an animal has ran off and then bled out and then I can't find it. It's so frustrating. It's so, so frustrating. Coal will no longer be extracted from the mineral extractors. Instead, there'll be all nodes. We all know this. Yep. And it did help. So thank you for that. There's no biomes, which be a home to specific wildlife and resources like all fish and lakes. Now fish. I mean, if you didn't know, there are their only home is that one pond. Okay. That's it. No other lakes, no, no other ponds. It's that one pond that's on the map with a fish. That's it. Kind of sucky. Hope they change that. By the way, if there's anything you guys wish they would change, or if you guys have any ideas, or anything, put it in the comments of this video. Procurement. So just getting it. I don't know why they use such fancy words. Frustrating. Placing extracted anywhere on the ground, or in caves, get you iron iron fragments within caves, copy aluminium, blah blah blah. Uh doo -doo -doo. wildlife changes. Inlets add to live or live baby branch. So as you can see, the bear on the table. We all know this. If you've watched my videos, you know this. Yes, it's goats, I've ran into goats. I might have accidentally clipped it out of a video. Yeah, we all know about that. And carry. No, we don't need a new page. I, I didn't need that. Jesus Christ. 
Yeah, that's the same. So then there's a bit of a checklist here. Alter animals to inhabit specific biomes. I actually think this is kind of interesting. Overall, become slightly more rare. Overall, wait. Alter animals to inhabit specific biomes. Overall, become slightly more rare. Hmm. Addition of the butcher table. Yeah, we know that. New animal types, chicken goats. When carrying an animal back to home base, the butcher walk speed will be reduced. Not reduced, you're just overcumbered. You can jump, however, for some reason. I think. So, I guess the only problem with specific biomes is, like, they're all so close together in this map. They're so small that the animals wouldn't really stick to a specific biome like that. Food recipes will be added or modified to utilize new animal byproducts. Okay. This will lead to another rebalancing of food quantity location and benefits of food. So basically, right now, there is this thing you can do. I watched a video on it where you can just eat. I think it's like watermelon and something else. And it'll like get your max stamina up more and more. So, and then, you know, you can eat another stew or whatever and it'll get your health up more and more and what that does is it increases it from like 100 to 101 to 102 and then you just keep doing that till it gets to the max which is 200 for stamina and 300 for health and i mean i'd get on that right now before they change it with the addition of range attacks for the ai new player blocking system to include shields okay so there was originally range attacks for the ai if you go back and watch like um i think it's fooster his like uh like sec no they don't come around until like the seventh day so it'd be like his third video probably he gets attacked and they throw like these knives at him so there was like a year ago, but there isn't any more. And then they're planning on bringing it back, but different. I do think shields would be cool, but I don't know how practical they would really be. Unless you can dual wield, no one's going to use a shield unless you can have one in one arm and one in the other. No one's going to, you know, and then, um, like a spear in the other. No one's going to be using shields. It's just not practical. Uh, props grown and gathered will be adjusted. So have these things been adjusted? Because can you put watermelons in here? Another food balance passed. We specific removals and additions. Because there's no shields. Can you do this? A thing. So they've just kind of named a thing like, would this be interesting? Could you do this? Do you want to be able to do this? I think doing something like this just like, yeah, why not add it? If it's not too difficult, go ahead, add it. Make it so you can put pumpkins in there too. Make it so you can put um ore in there. Make it so you can put um small animals in there. I don't see why. You like, imagine you're on a sub trying to survive, right? You got this stone crate you just built. You got a car to put it on. Why can't you put all these things in it? Like, what's stopping you, right? Now we're getting to the interesting stuff. New feature, animal husbandry. So recently, I actually just saw a video. They added this to green hell i hope they don't do it like green hell but it sounds like they're gonna and we'll get we'll get to that in a second so this is the developer's thoughts um now all of this says the developer's thoughts and i've even said the developer but i'm pretty sure there's about like f at least five developers like there's like a team of developers working on this i'm pretty sure because if you've ever loaded up the game, you'll know it's DigX Studios. So, adding Animal Hunter would not only give players a new mechanic to enjoy, 
but will allow players to privately breed and harvest animals great so far for specific product use world. Yep, so that's very useful. For specific products useful to enhance crafting. That's so useful, right? <clears throat> Possible path to domesticating. Use food traps to lure animals into a pen or pasture once inside and will stay put. Now this sounds a lot like what they just added to Green Hell. Except in Green Hell you use like these poison darts, which make no sense because then your animal's poisoned. Anyway. So yeah, food trap makes a lot more sense to lure animals into a pen or pasture. The only problem I have with this is I want to be able to get animals from other biomes, like a goat or a wolf or something, or a sheep, and put it in my biome, which most likely most of you are going to have the one near the lake with the fish, and put it in that biome. Now this sounds like you're going to have to have like a pen, like here. Where's my hand? Like, okay, we'll use this instead. So it sounds like you're going to have to have like a pen like here, right? And then you're going to have to have um, like the animal here and then put it in the pen, the, the trap. And then it will come into the pen. But how do you do that when, you know, your goat's all the way over here and your pen's all the way over here? It's not going to do it. It'll find like something else first. Something else with this is I really want to be able to do this with bears, not just regular uh, animals that don't attack you, so predators as well. And I also think it would be really cool if you were able to use scorpions, because right now scorpions don't do anything. They give you one raw meat, they're stupid, they don't do anything. So I think it would be really cool if you could make poison tipped arrows, put poison on your spears, on your katana, and maybe even use like the claws or the tail of the scorpion to be able to tool for a weapon. Like if you had the crossbow, then you could add like the tail onto like, I don't know, you know, like add the tail onto the arrow and then when it hits something, it's like instantly poison. Maybe that's how you do it or, um, yeah, I don't know. But I think the poison thing with the scorpions makes a lot of sense. We should, they should definitely do that. Captured animals would provide the byproducts required for crops and complex foods. Okay. See, that's good. Right. But what else can they do? Because back, if you've seen my most recent or even the one before you'll see i have so much food and that's just from like two that's the, from like some crocodiles and some bears that's from when i made the large backpack i have so much food stored and it doesn't go for a real time of 18 hours and it's probably got like eight hours left Sorry, eight hours left now, but yeah, it's got so much time. So you could just go get like three, four crocodiles or a bear whenever you see one and you'd be good. Like you don't need, or you could do fish, just fish for like an hour with your spear and you'd be good. You don't need to do this. They need to make it sort of like not needed, but. A reward that's better and i've talked about this before sort of in saying like don't just make it so you know you can breed them and then kill them like um like a pig in minecraft make it more like a cow in minecraft right where if you kill the sheep you get the wool if you or you can trim the sheep as well right and then um if you have uh a bear, you can use its fangs or its teeth or its head. And, you know, you're really getting all the use out of the animal. And if you go watch um, experts react, whenever you see 
the hunter or the survivalist talk? The expert hunter or the expert survivalist talk, you always say, you always see them say that they're never ever getting the most use out of the animal. They're always going, but you're leaving that whole animal behind. Just, you know, you took its skin and you left the rest of the animal behind. Or, that's great that you took the meat, but what about its skin and its fangs and all these other things you could be using? So, just, I think they need to keep that in mind. Um, yeah, there's just so many things that you could do, like goats. And use the go horn for stuff. Come on, like. I'm not, like, for animals dying or anything, but it's in the game. You're in a survival situation, right? Think of, like, Red Dead Redemption, right, for example. You go there, you take the skin of an animal, and that's it. Like, you don't take anything else. So, it needs to be, like, you take the whole thing, or even you can choose... Um, well, kind of like when you butcher an animal, right? You can choose what things you take. Captured animals will have food, water requirements, or they will die. See, I don't like that. I don't like that for two reasons. <clears throat> okay, we'll get into this stuff in a second, but food, water requirements. Don't like this because, one, this, right, most likely we're going to have these animal pens all around the map. So we're going to have to be running around to all these animal pens all around the map and it's going to be really annoying because we're going to have to be refilling food and water for them all the time. This isn't a fun mechanic for us. This isn't interesting. It's just like, oh, well, there's another thing I've got to do now. However, if there's some sort of automated way we can do this that could be interesting for example um the water part the water house automatically refills the water if let's say there's a water trough right if the water trough can be filled up by rain as well if you can have a water basin in there if um if it's in a lake, it'll automatically refill itself. I don't know. But these things are helpful things that they could consider. And then you have the food part. I don't really have suggestions for the food part, to be honest. I mean... I'm trying to think what's in the game right now. Maybe if they added some sort of open storage container that we could use for our own stuff. You know, kind of like um, the shelves they have, except the storage container. And then if we wanted to, we could put it in here in the animal pen. And they could just kind of take food out when they wanted to and just eat it. That's really the only thing I could think of. Kind of like this. This. If we could do this. And they could just kind of munch on it when they wanted to. And if you had this full of like pumpkins or watermelons, it would take a really long time for them to finish it. That's the only thing I can think of. So where were we? Where the fuck were we? Dude, I totally lost where we were. Game menu settings, yeah, we went through that. I don't think we went through that, but we were over here, right? Here, okay. Also, we didn't go over those. That's why I'm so confused. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so back to it. We were... Okay, they will breed... Just call it that. Reduce offspring. Yeah, obviously. Have an age and gender. Okay, so I kind of get the gender thing. That's fine. Whatever. 
but I don't like the age part because it doesn't really make sense. So many reasons, and it's just going to encourage such bad behavior. So the first part of that is, right, so it doesn't really make sense because why does it need an age? How do we know the age, right? We're not an expert, are we? We don't know the story yet, but we're not an expert on animals. So how do we know the age? What if there's an animal that's, what if we can only find animals that are really old? What if there's an animal that's already really old? Do we just say, nah, forget that one? Is it going to be more difficult to domesticate an animal that's older than when it's younger? I mean, yeah, in the real world, yeah. So is that going to apply here? And then secondly, I mean, animals that are older, in, in the real world, people don't want it. People don't care. People don't care past babies and then for food, past just getting to adults. When they're at the biggest. So if, is that going to apply in this game as well? Which is just implying bad practices. I'd prefer not. I know it's a game. But personally I prefer not. And it's a, such a simple thing just to take out. Or not even add in the first place. The gender thing's fine. Because it's an animal. Animals only have male, female. As far as I know. I mean... I'm pretty sure there are some which don't have genders at all, but all the animals in this game, they're only known as ever male or female. Um, animals will be butchered for meat. Hide. Right now, hide doesn't do much, I've got to be honest. I made the quiver, and I don't think there's anything else it can do. Other than, like, the furniture, which doesn't do anything. We'll get into that as well. ETC, goat's milk. Yeah, chicken feathers, eggs. Yeah, I already get eggs, chicken feathers. Can you get goat's milk already? I don't think you can. If you can, let me know. You can get wool already, can't you? Somehow. If you kill a sheep, maybe. And boars, bacon. You must be able to get bacon because there's bacon recipes. Can be domesticated. I haven't seen a boar yet, don't think. Um... So yeah, this is what I was talking about earlier when I said there needs to be more. This isn't enough. Other than the goat's milk and the wool. Like, this really isn't enough to, you know, warrant a whole animal husbandry feature. And I get, like, maybe you're just going to be coming out with these things at first. But you could make like a next checklist, just one more. Because you got four here, normally there's five. But you could just add one more saying like, oh, we will be coming out with also uh, goats' horns, goats' wool, goat wool, yeah. Um, and make that do something. Um, chicken feet? I don't know, what else do chickens do? Sorry, I'm not sure what chickens do, really. Chicken feathers. Chicken eggs, right? Yeah. Um. Oh, well, obviously, if we kill the chicken, the meat. What should for meat? Hide. Um. Sheep. What does sheep have? Yeah. Well, I guess, but, like, I also would like a way to be able to somehow farm fish. That would be cool. I think we can agree on that. Instead of having to spear them all the time. Just have kind of like a trap for them. Seven animal pen, just have a trap. Or maybe you could even do like a sort of animal pen for the fish. Then we could get like a row from the fish, and I think it's called row. And, um, what else? What else do fish do for us? Fish oil would be a way to get fish oil. Because I know that's in the game. I'm not sure, yeah. So, yeah, we didn't really go over this stuff because it's already in the game, like I was saying. 
but this is what it used to look like if you were unsure. And this is what it looks like now. And this, I can't really see much. I mean, I'm a graphic designer. I can't really see a difference here. Um, the wooden water basins. I think the difference is they can be made out of wood now. When they used to not be able to. Which makes sense, right? But uh, they look the same. Maybe they should have taken a photo when it wasn't raining as well. Just saying. Okay, on to this. This is really cool. This is the basic framework plan of the plan for friendly AI. Friendly keyword. Details are sparse and basic at this time. Image number one, repair stuff, take care of plant beds, replenish log stands. Priority list. So it looks like you can give them a priority list, kind of like a to-do list. And this is the things they will do for you in this order. So this kind of reminds you of um, this land is my land a little bit, where you just kind of say, hey, we should do this. And then after that, you're going to do this. And after that, you're going to do this. And um, yeah, I mean... That would be really cool. Apparently, you have to hand them the tools, though. We'll get into that in a second. It will say. Okay. So, apparently, this is one of the models. I mean, it kind of reminds me of one of the models from Hold Your Own, but anyway. Pretty generic. It definitely didn't use MetaHuman. <laughs> it's a joke there. Anyway. He looks like a mechanic, so I hope they don't have designated things they can do. You know, I hope they can all just do whatever they want to do, whatever you want them to do. Maybe they could have, um, like, one specific designated thing that, like, they can do that they're really good at. So this guy might be able to, um, wait, let's go back to, let's just choose this one, for example. So this person looks like they're a soldier, right? So they might be really good at hunting, for example. So if you wanted one of your AI to hunt, you'd preferably pick this person, right? But you don't have to. You can pick one of the others. Maybe if you pick this person, they come back with, you know, maybe they can carry more. Um, maybe they can carry two raccoons at a time. Two bears at a time. Don't know how, but or maybe they can. Um, I don't know. Get fifty percent more stuff when they when they hunt that specific thing. So if you send them out to hunt chickens, they harvest the chicken. They get fifty percent more stuff, or double the amount of you know chicken and eggs and stuff and feathers. So maybe this guy can repair stuff twice as fast, but you don't have to have him to repair things. I hope it's that way and I hope that you don't have to use specific people for specific things. Friendly AI that can be found rescued sources unknown because they don't know the story yet. So would require housing to join your settlement. Now this, when I saw this, I was like, I hope the housing is like in Terraria where you kind of say, okay, here's your, here's your part of the house. Here's your room. You got your bed. You got your chair and your table. You know, in this game, you might go, okay, you got your bed, your storage container, and your fire or something like that. Yeah, your campfire. That would be cool. And then go, okay. And then they'd be like, all right, I have somewhere to move in now. I can join you. However, um, I think they require a specific prefab build housing. Um, AI will be able to help with base defense, but would need weapons. Yeah. So I think if they were to go hunting or something like that, you'd have to give them the weapons. If they were to um, repair your base, where did it say that? 
Put that somewhere, I swear to God. Here. Repair stuff. So if they were to do these things, they would need the things to do those. So the water and everything. I don't know how that would work. I can perform basic player dictated tasks. Would require food. Now this kind of makes sense. But hopefully they can go get their own food. And you can just kind of say this is your storage container. Take food from here only. And if they're like well there's no food. Then they just kind of stand there like a sim like. Uh -uh. Where's my food? Hopefully. That's kind of how that works. I'm really excited for AI because there's literally no friendly AI in games that actually do stuff for you. So alliteration to M enemy AI. We'll go over this in a second. So alteration to enemy AI. Removal of Fortnite's details in card interior. This these changes are being worked on and thought over as upcoming changes and mechanics to the game. Have small groupings of Vambi spawn in and after time has passed. Basic Vambi's with a special Vambi. A high HP tank bruiser with the ability to pulverize spikes. Opening pathing for the lesser ones to come in. Now, if you've watched any of my recent videos, you'll know that, um, or watch me live, you'll know that. Vambies can't destroy a lot of things in the game. So they're going to have to change that first. Because I have signs all around my base. So Vambies literally cannot get in my base. I have to add a few more signs so they can't. But yeah, they can't destroy the signs either. I can destroy the fence behind the signs. But they can't destroy the signs. If you have a fence spike poking out even by a millimeter, they can destroy it. They can get hurt by it, but they can destroy it. So, you can't really win in that situation, but you can have a base where they just can't enter. I am working on a way to farm Bambies to a point where, like, you can just have a whole night every night and just kind of stand there. And watch them all die around you and just collect like a hundred vambies and yeah but i don't know how to do that yet so let's see high up tank bruiser with the, yeah we read that the lesser ones that come in okay enhance the toggle on off abilities related to vambies town vambies located at pois wandering vambies group with special vambies okay so I thought these might be different. I haven't seen any different. I haven't tested the town Vambies much, but I haven't seen any different. Um, what would you call it? Uh, AI differences in them, you know, because if you go to a town of Vambies sees you and starts running towards you and you run away, there's no ring where they just stop chasing you they will chase you across the map wandering vampies do the same horde vampies are a little different horde vampies are different in every way <clears throat> add ability for player to modify how much damage vampies can do to player built item structures yeah i think we do we have no we don't have that we have okay so right now we have how much damage they do to us and how much health they have and we, yeah, how much health they have. Right? So this is the new thing that they want to put in. We got town vambies. We don't have this up here yet. Wandering vambies, group vambies. So up here right now, it looks like this. It'll go enable horde. So the first one's, um, how often do you want the horde to happen? Every day, every 10 days, blah, blah, blah. The second one is, do you want it enabled? And that's it. And then here, it's just Vambies. And then it goes, I'm pretty sure it just goes Vambies. And then it's like, 
how much health they have and how much damage they do. And here they're saying there's town vambies, wandering, and grouped vambies. Not sure what group vambies are, but I guess we'll find out. And there's also that mini boss they were talking about. They can destroy spikes. So you can decide how much health damage it does to you, damage it does to buildings. And this one I'm really going to like because I do not like doing damage to buildings. However, my question is, does a spike count as a building? Hmm? Does it? Does a spike count as a building? Because if so, this one and this one aren't going to be able to destroy the spikes. Or, if this one can destroy the spikes no matter what, these ones, I mean... <laughs> You can just turn off damage to spikes and then you have an ultimate Bambi farm forever. Easy. The Predator ones all look the same. Also, Scorpions, this is really stupid. They don't have health here. But they they have a health pool. It's just so small that if you shoot them or hurt them with anything. It'll do damage. So if I was these guys, I would have just put like one and made it adjustable. <laughs> um, yeah. And raccoon, deer, and sheep just don't do damage because they won't attack you at all. That don't even attack buildings. So, as you can see, there are goats, boars, bears, foxes, and wolves in the game. I haven't seen foxes yet. Um, that's everything for that one. So this right here. New POIs, point of interest. So, I'm more interested in kind of what's going on here. What are they? Is that something the person's holding? Or what is that? How do we... Is there a way to get rid of this? Okay. Well, whatever. But, yeah. So, apparently this is going to be... A new point of interest. So, this is a new village idea i guess or just showing off the buildings um interesting i was wondering how they did this because this doesn't look like a player would have built it this looks like it's pre-built So if we look at this one, you can see kind of looks like this one with the scaffolding outside, but might not be, but it does look like it, doesn't it? But yeah, so if we look, if we scroll down here. Okay. So these are just new points of interest on the map. So like kind of like a new village idea for them, you know, a new village idea. Um building and crafting. Friendly AI bell summits. Now this is what I was talking about. With the addition of friendly AI, player bases will become more akin to a settlement. For those participating in rescuing flying AI homes for the friendly AI with pre-built placeables like the greenhouse. So you know how the greenhouse works? You put it down and then you have to build it. That's how these houses are going to work and there's one of them. 
as an AI. So that's how it's going to work. And then you'll put it down. And personally, I don't like that, okay? Because it's just going to take up space. We don't need it taking up space. You can see there's AI buildings there. <sighs> and it's in the wrong spot too. It should be in construction. But anyway. Yeah, it's just going to take up space. I don't like that. And it looks ugly. What if you had a full glass house with like everything? No, it's it's going to look bad. Okay, they should have done it like Terraria, where you just have a room, the AI goes, yes, there are the right requirements for me to move into this room, and then it moves into the room. I don't know how difficult that is to do, but that's how they should have done it. Okay? Endless building and crafting. So apparently, this is an electric fence. Looks like a barbed wire one to me. Prefab homes are friendly AI. So this is a list of possible new items. So the prefab homes. I hope that is not a possible new item. New crafting stations. Interesting. New weapons. Awesome. New clothing and armor. Awesome. New defense style placeables. Awesome. Why pole placeable rather than a construction item that allowed to host control panel, junction box, relay, and switch lamp post placeable for lighting outside for uh, light for lighting outside, lighting roads, and all in one with the post light. Uh, so what they're saying is that instead of having right now you have to place this thing on a prefab for it to work you have to place it on like a little foundation for it to work right on a corner of one as well you can't just place it on the ground i'm not sure what that is maybe that's what the light is anyway yeah but i think yeah if they can make it place anywhere on the ground, that would be really, really helpful. Really, really cool. Because then, yeah, you could do things like this. And you wouldn't have to fill your whole base up with um, foundations like I'm probably going to have to do. Not sure what these are, but I kind of like them. That's cool. Placeable rather than construction item, yeah. Okay, yep, I see what they're saying. Okay. Now, possibles from the community. Please remember, this list is not promised. These are just community suggestions of interest to the developer. Game menu settings. Setting to handle tree regrowth rate. So they have that in the forest and it's really handy. Um, you know, you can choose if you want your trees to regrow or not. And most of the time, yeah, you have it on, but I think, you know, some players might not want them to regrow. Find a key to open food bag. And I think a tree regrowth thing, which it's called tech speed in um, Minecraft, would be really handy. Because you can choose how quickly you want the trees to regrow, if they regrow at all. Toggle for turning off lightning flashes or making them optional. Yeah, so this would be handy for mainly epileptic people. Um, turning off lightning flashes. The problem is that people don't realize right with epileptic people is that it's not just lightning flashes, right? It's every time they turn on um, one of these lights. Or every time it goes from <laughs> night to day, just like that. Like every time you go from inside a house to outside a house and it's dark and then 
like let's say it's really dark inside and wham you go outside and it's really bright and <sighs> yeah like in the caves right now so if you go in a cave right now it's daytime in this game it'll get really really dark then when you get close to the cave entrance it'll just bam brightness so label bears to be able to choose your own respawn point upon death cool idea don't know pro they probably won't do it they probably won't do it but it's a cool idea i like that so you could have like i think they need to make a death penalty first really before they do this because right now if they did this people would just die and then fast travel somewhere else and then die and fast travel somewhere else and some of you are probably going but but you lose stats every time you die and if you're late game who cares you have 300 health 200 stamina and even if you're not late game, you can just get it back really easily. Um, okay, we looked at that one. Fix to spawn when you are spawning into mobs. Either spawn outside of bad area or spawn away from that area. So far, I haven't had this problem at all. But, yeah, definitely. This is something they need to do i don't know if they do it in other games or not i'm trying to think of a game they do it did they do it on minecraft i don't think so yeah fix the spawn when you're spawning into mobs are the spawn outside of bad area or spawn away from the area yeah so i think something you could do is like if there's someone too close if there's a mob too close to your bed right you spawn 10 20 meters away from your bed if that's that's when you die when you die of course not when you're sleeping Upgrade concrete railings to metal railings. This... I don't know. Have they... You can upgrade uh, concrete fences to metal fences. I'm actually surprised they haven't just done that on their own. Okay. Control support. Ah, uh, that's kind of difficult for them. I understand that. Searchable crafting menu. Definitely. Definitely. I've talked about this so many times. Definitely. Definitely have that. Enhancements of the death penalty. Yep, I've talked about this. It's hard to say at this point what shape uh, this tweak would take. Several options have been examined and discarded at this time. Damn, did they <laughs> look at the bag drop option? So basically that option is um, basically like uh, if you ever play Valheim, you lose your stuff. There's your bag on the ground there. Or if you play Minecraft with like a mod where like, okay, so basically you lose your stuff, but it's in a bag for you on the ground there. You have to go back to that area, get your stuff. I don't think there needs to be a despawn timer on it, but yeah, you go back, get your stuff, or you can just leave it there. You don't need to go back and get it if you didn't, if you didn't want it. If you had like, sometimes like in Minecraft, you have like one or in Valheim, you'll have like one thing on you that you're like, uh, and then you'll be like, nah, don't worry, I'll just make a new one. So, yeah, I think that that's I think that's the easiest and best way to go about it, at least at the start, and then you can figure out something a bit more difficult. Changes to food inventory definitely changes to food inventory size because when you get the large backpack, it upgrades your normal backpack, but it doesn't upgrade your food backpack. Which doesn't make sense because everyone thought they were the same backpack until you upgraded. So apparently you're carrying around two backpacks. Like, what? Player made icons, Matt Marcus. Okay. So, 
this just basically means like again with the Valheim, right? Or um so they could go about this two ways. You could go about it in kind of like Valheim where you have the map up and then you have little icons you can use. Five to ten items you can use. And then you can kind of just name it and then go. So you click on the map and go, okay. I want I want it here and then just go gonna name it this da, 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 da. and you might name it village one or you might name it um bound tech here or truck or whatever or um yeah whatever or you go about it the forest way and I think they should go about the forest way that seems like the kind of game this is and that way you kind of say Okay, well, you can build this map marker. And what it does is it shows you a little flag from wherever you are. You don't need to open your map to see it. It shows you the little flag. You can change the color of the flag. I also think, though, on top of that, it would be nice if you could name it. Because in the forest, you run out really quickly of these colors. So you start grouping things together. So you start going like, Oh, but all my base stuff will be red. All, all the stuff, um, all the cave stuff will be blue. All the, uh, I don't know, camp stuff that I come across will be red. And then this game will be like, all the village stuff will be yellow and blah, blah, blah. And, but then you still end up running out of stuff because it's just so much stuff to do. So I think if you could do that, where you just use basically a stone and then one or two sticks and some rope and bam, you got yourself a map marker. And then you can just name it whatever you want. And that's where it'll stay. It can't be destroyed by anything. Nothing can destroy it. And it's only small. It's only small, about the size of the person in the game. Maybe a little shorter. And yeah, I think that's the way to go about that. Composter. Not really sure why people want a composter. Um, maybe instead of having to spoil your food, they just want uh composter maybe there's something i haven't come across yet in the game but yeah you know how composters work i'm not really sure why this person wants it revisit where shift click is used within game mm. so many times i'll go to shift click and it's like oh right click i'm like what yeah so electric fencing some type of electric protection defense So I think if they did this, they could have this and then they could add one that looks almost similar. Just take the barbed wires off this, right? And then just have these up here, take the barbed wire off and just put straight lines across. Just retexture it like that. And then just call it an electric fence and don't make it look rusty make it look metal and call it an electric fence and make it so whenever enemy touches it or an animal bam get zapped so yeah i think that's about everything thanks for watching if you enjoy please like subscribe and hit the bell for notifications if you would like to see my infected series, click one of the boxes. And if you want me to do a guide or a tutorial or tips on anything else in the infected game, let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you in my next infected video.